everybody and welcome to Brindley TV. Um, this is a brand new series where we're going to be talking to uh, some of our occupiers across Brindley Place. So my name is Stacey, I'm the Marketing and Events Executive for Brindley Place and for my guest for the first episode we have Sam Newman from Icon Gallery. Hi Stacey, hello. <laughs> Sam here. So Sam is the Head of Development at the Gallery um for anybody who's listening who doesn't necessarily know what icon gallery is sam would you be able to give an outline of what kind of icon is and what it's all about yeah absolutely so um in a nutshell um we're an art gallery so uh, independent art gallery not-for-profit organization um and we show exhibitions of contemporary visual art by artists from all over the globe, um, international artists as well as local ones. And we welcome about 200,000 visitors to the gallery each year. Mm -hmm. So the exhibitions change quite frequently. We do four main exhibition slots per year. And um, we've got two floors of gallery space. So sometimes we'll have an art artist who'll take over the whole building. Sometimes we'll have an artist on each floor of the gallery. Um, we've also got a uh, on-site uh, cafe run by Yorks and we have our own uh, shop as well which is a uh, an art bookshop uh, as well as gifts and limited editions things like that. Yeah and as somebody who works on Brindley Place I literally love going to like <laughs> to the shop <laughs> and buying or especially the, the books are good for like coffee table i think that's um, right yeah and it's good for emergency things. card buying um mm. we get a lot of people from the offices actually coming in to buy cards oh yes i bet but um obviously brinley place is kind of quite an unexpected place and there's lots of surprising things that people might not necessarily know about brinley is there anything kind of interesting and unexpected about icon that people might not necessarily know about yeah, I had a little bit of think about um, some things. I mean, a lot of people actually don't know that we're a charity. So we are a charitable yeah. organisation. Mm. Um, I guess one of the kind of key uh, things to mention is that Icon's entirely free to visit. Yeah. So um, all of our exhibitions are completely free. Um, so in that respect, it's um, we're quite a good kind of resource really for sort of communities to kind of use um so i'd encourage kind of anybody back when we're open of course to um come along to see some amazing exhibitions uh, completely for free um we've also been in in birmingham uh, longer than people expect actually um it's maybe due to the fact that we've been in kind of different locations around the city yeah. over the years but we first opened in 1965 in a um a very small octagonal wall, uh, glass walled kiosk in the old bull ring. Oh. Um, so quite a different kind of space and a different size to the organization then certainly to, um, uh, you know, where we are now in kind of Brindley Place really. Um, but those, yeah, those are a couple of things that I thought of that kind of yeah. people might not know. It's interesting. I think as well, so I've heard that um, the Icon building used to actually be a, a school back in the day. Um, so it's quite, an it's got quite an unusual quirky past, I think, as well. Yeah, it's um, a lovely building. It's grade two listed, um, but you're right. It was it was a uh, the Oozles Street boarding school, and um, it uh, yeah, it's quite spectacular. And obviously, um, when we first arrived in Brittany Place, it was a heritage lottery grant that enabled us to um, take on the site and and kind of bring the building back to its former glory. Really, yeah, definitely. Um... Oh, interesting. And obviously, I know you said about kind of the, uh, the gallery being free for people um, to visit. And obviously, that's kind of bringing fine art to the, the wider kind of Birmingham community and even beyond, really, because I know that obviously it's not just people from Birmingham who come to see the gallery. Okay. Um, and I know that you guys work quite a lot with the Birmingham community. Um, if you want to potentially explain a little bit more. Yeah, of course. Um, so... Uh, as I mentioned, we're kind of, um, we sort of class ourselves as an educational charity. Yeah. So learning is um, kind of really at the heart of ICON's work and what we do. Mm -hmm. um, so we aim to provide everybody with access to visual arts and, and try to encourage a kind of understanding and appreciation for contemporary art. Yeah. Um, so we work a lot with local schools, mm -hmm. um, the universities, um, yeah. 
We also have a group called Icon Youth Programme, mm -hmm. IYP. Uh, they're all aged between 16 to 21 years old and they uh, meet regularly to work on different creative projects and kind of experience the exhibitions together. So yeah. that's an entirely free kind of thing as well. Um, we, we also do a lot of work off site. So, uh, for instance, we use, uh, we have our own canal boat uh, called Slow Boat, and we use that as a floating space for workshops um, in and around uh, the canal network within Birmingham. Mm -hmm. We also do kind of work in sort of unusual places as well. So we, we currently have an artist in residence at HMP Grendon, which is a prison in uh, Buckinghamshire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, in terms of kind of, engaging with communities we, we kind of do a lot of that at the gallery but also mm. off-site as well so that's quite an important element to what we what we do um, we've recently shown for example the work of Barry Flanagan and currently John Newling in Brindley Place so John's work is actually there at the moment so if anybody is kind of walking through <laughs> Brindley Place um, they can still see John's work mm. in the cherry trees in Oozle Square yeah Mm, yeah definitely I think it's just so interesting as well that it's not just kind of one community it's such a varied number of different communities so everything from you know working in a prison to you know working with young aspiring artists um, I think that must be really interesting so we've kind of discussed a little bit about what Icon Gallery is um, and interested to kind of understand a little bit more about your role and what the head of development kind of entails on a on a day-to-day -day basis Sure. So, um, yeah, as, he, as we mentioned, I'm head of development at the gallery. So what that effectively means is um, the, the kind of main facet really of the role is fundraising. Mm -hmm. So um, we receive um, core funding from Arts Council England and also Birmingham City Council. But we have to raise a kind of a large proportion yeah. of funds for, for our artistic programme from other sources. Mm -hmm. So um, we do that in lots of different ways, really. Um, but these can include sort of sponsorship uh, from local businesses. Um, we have a corporate uh, patron scheme as well as an individual patron scheme. Mm -hmm. We also raise money kind of through uh, d donations. So either online uh, when people are kind of maybe booking onto an event, they can make a basket donation. Mm -hmm. um, also, we have a cash donations box and uh, contactless donations points at the gallery mm -hmm. when we're open. Um, and then I touched upon it earlier uh, as well, but we, we have our icon shop, which is kind of like the business arm, I suppose, of the charitable yeah. organisation. Mm -hmm. And as well, York's Cafe, um, you, they um, uh, rent the space from us. So they effectively... Um, yeah, the, the busier they are, the better for us, really. It's great yeah. to see people using the cafe as well. Yeah, definitely. And they do the best baked goods possible. They do, yeah. <laughs> so if I'm ever I have to have a meeting on site, got to go to York's and have one of those brownies because they're amazing. That's right, yeah. And it, it's a real sun trap in the summer, actually. Mm, yeah, lovely place to sit out in the sun. Um, yeah. yeah, so it's interesting to kind of, kind of saying about summer, really. Obviously, currently... Um, we have the COVID-19 pandemic, which is happening, which obviously is having a major impact upon sort of, you know, the leisure industry as a whole. Mm -hmm. And obviously Icon is currently closed. Um, how have um, kind of Icon as an organization kind of tried to combat that and engage with the community in different ways? Yeah, well, um... It, it's interesting because um, obviously, you know, the, the gallery, we were forced to close. So that kind of happened quite quickly, I suppose. Yeah. Um, the decision uh, was taken. And um, it's kind of had a knock-on effect on a number of different things. You know, we had to postpone a lot of events. We've had to cancel some events. Mm. Um, we've tried to do our best to kind of keep uh, things moving as much as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. Certain things have been slightly forced out of our control. We've had to um, unfortunately postpone our summer exhibition, yeah. um, which was Icon in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. um, so that was an exhibition that was going to feature the work of over 40 artists who exhibited at Icon in the 90s. Mm -hmm. um, 
so she had to take a decision to kind of postpone that exhibition, but we will be hosting that exhibition at Icon next year. Yeah. Oh, um, that's yeah. So we're kind of pleased that we can sort of go ahead with it. So it's not been cancelled entirely, which is great. Um, but also, um, you know, we've been very active digi digitally. So yeah. um, the team have been working hard to produce a lot of um, exhibition related content. Mm -hmm. Uh, certainly over the, uh, the last few weeks to bring the exhibitions that we have to life online. Uh, yeah, so, definitely. Um, we've, we've produced artist interviews, uh, virtual walkthroughs of the gallery, um, and lots of creative family activities that are again all free to download from the website. Mm -hmm. So um, to find out about those, people can sign up to our mailing list via the website, but they can also connect with us over social media um, and all of that content will kind of be there for, for them to see and sort of engage with. So, um, yeah, that's kind of where to find out about all of this stuff, really, that we've been doing. Yeah. And I mean, um, some of the kind of kids activity as well, as somebody that is an adult, um, I actually saw one on paper marbling, um, which looked yeah. really interesting and I want to do myself. Um, I there's actually loads like of stuff. one that more adults end up doing yes. kids. Oh yes, yeah, really yeah. Good, uh, response to that. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, you can make some homemade cards, or you know, you yeah. can, lots of different things you could do with that. Yeah, definitely. Um, is there any kind of plans at the moment for when obviously it's safe to do so, when I can't do kind of open up again? Is there any plans on what opening will look like? Anything in the pipeline? Well, it's hard to say at the moment. Um, I mean, I suppose the main thing is that we're really just looking forward to having, um, you know, the doors open again and welcoming visitors back to Icon. Yeah. yeah. Um, what we will definitely be doing is giving the, uh, the opportunity, opportunity to um, see the current exhibitions for a little bit longer. Yeah. So we've got uh, the work of Judy Watson and John Newling at the moment. Mm -hmm. And um, these were only open a couple of weeks before we had to close to the public. Yeah. So many people won't have had the opportunity to see those. So mm -hmm. we're hoping that, you know, once we reopen, people will have a chance to see, see those exhibitions for, for a time. Yeah. Um, we're also kind of planning uh, uh, our public programme and how that might be sort of realised really under new sort of circumstances. Yeah. Um, so we'll probably be doing some exclusively digital events as well. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll kind of be announcing those through uh, social media and our website. Yeah, definitely. We will also be announcing them on our channels too, of course. That's great. Thank <laughs> you. Um, but yeah, so it sounds like, you know, even though things are a little bit uncertain at the moment, but unfortunately, I think uncertain for everybody at, at this stage, it sounds like there's still some quite exciting stuff in the pipeline and things. To yeah, come. absolutely. Yeah, we're yeah. always looking ahead and we're trying to kind of, um, you know, stay positive, really. Mm, definitely, definitely. Cool. And so obviously you mentioned kind of um, the 90s exhibition, which is coming next year. Is there anything coming... Uh, this year that you're particularly excited about? Yeah, we've got two um, amazing artists actually um, coming up later this year. So in the autumn, we've got an exhibition by a Czech artist called uh, Christoph Kintera. Mm -hmm. And he creates these amazing uh, sculptural installations. Um, and then following that exhibition in winter, we've got an exhibition by... Um, a Pakistani artist called Aisha Khalid uh, and she works with um, traditional sort of miniature painting techniques. Yeah. Um, her work's really sort of beautiful so they're quite large-scale paintings. Mm -hmm. So I think both of those exhi exhibitions are going to be really interesting actually for audiences. Yeah. Um, I'd be interested to see how they how they kind of use the space as an icon because uh, mm -hmm. they're both going to be across both floors so uh, quite big exhibitions for each of them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So one question. Um, so obviously the artists bring their work to the gallery. How much say do they then have in how uh, the space is utilised within the gallery? So do they kind of make the decision that they want to put X, Y, Z here and that arrange there? Or how does it work? For yeah, it's, it's interesting. There's a lot of different uh, conversations that happen o over time. Yeah. The exhibitions are actually kind of planned quite far in advance. Mm -hmm. So these conversations can be 
uh, sometimes happening for a, a couple of years at least. Yeah. Working out the details of the show, what's going to be included. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, it's a conversation really between um, uh, our sort of curatorial team at Icon. So uh, Icon's director, Jonathan Watkins, and Icon's new curator, Melanie Pocock. So uh, it could be a conversation that the artist has with, uh, you know, Jonathan and Melanie to mm -hmm. kind of discuss sort of placement of works. Some artists actually are quite um, uh, sort of meticulous in their planning um, mm -hmm. and like to kind of know where things are going to be going. Mm -hmm. And then others kind of like to actually sort of be, be an icon for the installation process and then make decisions in the space. Yeah. So it really kind of varies, but... Um, you know, it's always a kind of open dialogue, really, between the artists and an and icon. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. Um, yeah, cool. So it sounds like there's some really kind of, like I said, exciting things happening. And I'm very interested to see the artwork later this year and also go back and see John Newling's um, art. Yeah, absolutely. It's like quite a long time ago now. But um, yeah, so Icon Gallery, you can follow Icon Gallery on their social media channels, which will be linked down below um our chat our social media channels will be uh linked down there as well and we'll be releasing episode two of the series um kind of to come and thank you for joining us sam you're very welcome stacy thanks for organizing it and um yeah great to have your support yes great thank you thank you